All right, welcome back to another Harmonious at Lunch. We have a super exciting and somewhat controversial episode today. Um, we're going to talk about AI. Now, before we get into AI, let's go over what we talk about every single episode at the start of the show, and that is, of course, the Harmonious Business Architecture. What we're talking about here is a system of looking at your business. It's the context to put all the content that you hear. There is no shortage of content in the world. What you are watching right now, this is content. But if you don't know where to put it in your business and how to hear it and filter it, how do you know what's for you and what's not for you? So let's just put this on the screen real quick. Whatif.com slash navigate. We have a free five-day workshop coming up. It's going to get you a rock-solid foundation for your business. And what we're going to be able to do is grow and scale your company based on this foundation. Most companies do not have that in place. That's what we find when we work with them when they come into our mastermind. So whatif.com slash navigate, and we'll get you that foundation to scale over the next 12 months. Now, enough about me, enough about what if. Let's dive in to our amazing guest from, guess what, Raleigh, where I am, Vanessa. So good to have you here. Welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm excited to dive in here. So we're talking about AI. It's the hot topic of the day. Um, everybody and their mother is talking about AI. But I want to start at the beginning. And I asked you this in the pre-meeting. I kind of felt like an idiot when I asked you, but I, I actually felt better after the way you explained it. Can you explain to me again, what is AI in your words? Yeah. Um, so AI is a super broad topic and um, it's essentially it mimics human intelligence. So in computer programs, if it's using like an if then logic or um, saying like if this um, if this fish is black, it should not be entering into a stream or a river. That is an example of AI. So like it's super broad and we see this with like um, in our own world, we've used it for years. Um, image classifiers on Google, Google's image reverse search. That those that's an example of AI, very broad AI. Um, yeah. So when you when you told me that originally, I was actually I was surprised because when when you think about computers, um, well, let's let's define the term AI is artificial intelligence, right? So when you think about computers versus AI, you almost think about them in two different categories. And we have this big, broad topic of artificial intelligence. What, what does that mean? Computers have, like you said, they've we've always been using if-then statements. That's what a computer program basically is. So when you when you say this kind of stuff, how long have we been using the traditional term of AI in in normal computing software? So um, yeah, so um, back in like the 1980s, financial institutions. Um, started to offer an AI program that allowed people over a certain amount of money per year. Um, back then, it was like the equivalent to $250,000 today um, to help them to make decisions for their uh, financial planning. Um, and then like we have seen it in the banking world where instead of us having really super long lines for um, incredibly long lines for banking tellers, we have chatbots on um, our online banking systems. Um, we have the ATM, which is a sort of, um, it's an automation rather than necessarily an AI. Um, but that it, those are examples of AI and automation and how they've been, how they've transformed industries that we've, we've seen. Um, so with AI being so broad, when people are talking about AI today, they're typically talking about generative AI or um, the large language model ChatGPT, which is actually like a subset of the of the industry. And before you get to generative AI, there's deep learning and there's machine learning. So machine learning gives programs the ability to like um, make decisions with the information that they're receiving. So an example of that is like face, uh, Facebook's facial recognition and tagging, um, which has been around for years. Also like Google's um, traffic predictions and also our ad suggestions. So advertising and marketing has been impacted by AI for a while. Um, deep learning is what makes generative AI possible though. Deep learning takes like a huge amount of data and 
teaches the AI patterns and how to generate within those patterns. Um, and then a step after generative AI, which is what uh, we're seeing with OpenAI and ChatGPT, is artificial general intelligence. And that will be when that the goal is to go towards that. Like that's a lot of research is trying to get there. And it's um, when an AI is aware of the fact that it doesn't have a certain amount of knowledge to answer a question, and then it pursues that learning itself. Um, and so when when people are talking about like the risks in AI of like experimental AI, that's what they're talking about is the artificial general intelligence. Yeah, that's I think that's interesting. And all of that is very enlightening for me. I mean, I don't I don't dive deep into AI, just like everybody else. I use chat GPT or whatever um, language models we have access to as the general public. But to know that, you know, we we've been experiencing and using AI for many years and now it's only helping us if you know how to use it correctly. I think the fear, though, when when AI and open AI in particular with chat GPT burst onto the scene, what was that like a year and a half, two years ago? It was very recent. Yeah. The, the fear was like, are we going into the matrix? Like, is yeah. that movie playing out in real life? Is this is this happening? Are machines taking over? And what I'm hearing from you is no, but we do need to be a little bit careful. Am I am I on the right track? Yeah, definitely. Like, um, so in the cybersecurity world, they talk about how like there's concerns with AI, but then like the so people are like, oh no, now all the bad guys have access to AI, and then the good guys are like, but we have the same access to those tools, you know, like, um, and the fact of the matter is that AI will always have human oversight. Like we don't um, when you don't want to have AI on autopilot necessarily, unless it's for like research and development, but in applying it into our real real world, there needs to be someone who's like doing quality control. Like, is that actually producing the pattern that we need to see? Is it producing the document or the text or the image uh, that we want? Because that's how you end up with the matrix, I would assume. <laughs> if, you just, if you let it run its course by itself and teach itself, I, yeah, I think that's that's how that movie came to be. So, okay, that's a cautionary tale for the future. If you haven't seen the matrix, go watch it. Um, but no, let's so let's dive into some real world applications. What can I want to talk about what business owners can do with AI to enhance their businesses now, specifically, small businesses. We we all know the big companies, the Microsofts, the Facebooks, the Googles, they're using this and they have the budgets to use it. Yeah. It, me, Mr. Small Business USA, do I have the budget to implement AI to help me scale my operations and become more efficient? Yeah, I definitely I definitely think that um, the benefit of open AI has and automation tools like Zapier or Make or something like that. It has made it affordable for small business owners to get connected with um, either uh, just like off the shelf sort of solutions if they have a very small budget or more bespoke uh, solutions, um, which is where I would typically recommend if people have the budget to do it. But, um, and also I would even recommend people not even to implement it if like, if it's just a glorified solution. And that would definitely be like the first thing that I would say like to watch out for and not to do. Um, like don't pay for a chat bot on a third party website. Um, that's just like, hey, give the information to me and it's just gonna fill out a form um, because that can frustrate users and actually takes more time than filling out a form. And it, you're just like, putting money down the drain where it's so much cheaper just to put a form on your website and point people there. Um, and then like another example of a glorified solution, like I love Canva, just want to put that out there. Um, it's really nifty to just like ease quickly and easily do things. Um, but they've offered like some free AI solutions. And if they were charging me for that, I would say that that would be like a glorified solution. Like, their AI isn't generative and amazing, amazing. And so um, I've seen some platforms that I, I don't want to name because I don't want I don't like trash talking people. Um, and so but just like watch out for don't pay for AI just because it's AI. Like, don't do that. Yeah. Um, 
I'm I'm no stranger to trash talking and getting in trouble. As a matter of fact, if you watched our <laughs> Inner Circle preview show last week, uh, I did just that. So we're not going to talk about that company, but <laughs> you don't have to say bad things about companies. But I do want to know, like, is it is there are there tools to look out for specifically? We're we're talking about ChatGPT versus well, let's do that. ChatGPT versus Bard. I had always used ChatGPT, uh, the normal free version. I had upgraded to pay for it for a little bit, but for me, and this is just, I don't know, dumb user experience, if you will, I'm no expert. I didn't love the amount of plugins required to get the output that I was looking for from ChatGPT. So I switched to Bard, which is Google's basically equivalent, um, and it's free. And it has access to Google. It searches the internet. I went through, I took the time, and I trained Bard in in the harmonious architecture. I gave it all of our data. I gave it samples of my writing, my speaking, um, whether it's social media posts or whatever. And I was able to now, I get the output that I'm looking for because I put the time in to train it. Are there tools that, you know, those are two of the bigger ones, but that we should actually avoid whether they're paid or free because they're going to cause more harm than good in the long term? Um, so that is such a huge and broad question that I'm going to ask. Like if someone has that question to please, like it depends on the solution, right? Like, yes, Fair. there are lots of AI tools out there that we've demoed with them because we're looking for solutions for people um, and uh, to refer them to people. And we're just like, at the end of the demo, we're like, we can never refer people to that solution at this point unless they do some major changes um but for example like the difference between bard and open ai like um there's limitations in what either one uh is producing so i do like bard for like when i'm doing uh internet research because it will search uh internet the internet and also it has access to all of google's like the data, right? So asking it for like the top 10, um, the top 10 cities that has the most sales or the most searches with like dog, um, dog tools, and then making your marketing based off of that, if you're selling an online dog tool store, right? Like, I hope that makes sense. So asking Bard, for that information, it's going to be better than asking open AI um, because it's using Google's information when it's giving outputting. Um, but then I like open AI also because of its API key and like I, I feel like it does a better job in like larger um, like larger text and dealing with uh, dealing with that and kind of being a bit more like literary in its response and things like that so like it depends on the depends on how someone's going to implement what they want yeah that's a great point and honestly i use both for completely different functions so yeah even you mentioning that um that's it's really good to know and understand look at the and this is what we always say at what if that's why we're tool agnostic any software we're really never going to recommend one for you because it's what works best for you in your particular situation. Um, so that being said, when you're at the verge of implementing AI or, or researching, implementing one of these tools, uh, Vanessa, I'm going to put your website on the screen here because I know you offer consultations. I would highly recommend you seek expert advice. This field is too new and it's too vast. And Vanessa, we've talked about this off air. Um, the amount of information in the AI industry and the speed with which that information is changing to me as an outsider is a little bit scary. So for someone who's looking to implement AI, how, how important is it to actually consult with whether it's you or someone like you, an expert in the, in the space who can understand what they're looking at? Yeah, I, I think it's incredibly important. And one thing that we offer to all of our clients is that, um, we are going to be, um, we're going to be updating them on like the best solution for them. So in the process, like if we implement a solution, for for example, we're just not going to let that remain stagnant. If we find out about another technology that's going to solve their problem better, um, then we're going to inform them and like upgrade them to that. So like 
in the case of most softwares and with most most businesses, like once they implement a solution, it just stays there, right? Like people who invest into building out go high level dashboards. Once they've got it figured out, they really don't want to touch it because it was so complicated to get it going in the first place. Um, I'm a go high level hater. Just gonna mention. That. Like, <laughs> you're in, you're that in the right program. place. Then yeah. I am too. I'm a former user, but I know what you mean. And that's the same thing with, I think, a lot of software exclusive of AIs. Once you invest the time and money and energy into building it and making it work for you, yeah, it's so hard to wrap your mind around switching and going through that process again. But yeah to know that you would have come with that solution with reasoning behind it. And you could probably explain the benefits of switching that makes the switch a lot easier. Yeah, exactly. And like we, like me and my co-founder and the people that we work for, we look for absolutely passionate people who aren't just in it to just like make a gold rush buck off it. Like we want people who eat and breathe and sleep AI. Like we are like, he and I, are, we're both always, always thinking about like, oh, this is happening in AI and like this technology is coming out. Like something that's really cool um, is multi-agents. And in the industry, we're kind of calling it like computer gossips where AI programs are kind of talking to each other. Um, but it can be helpful for like, if you have a sales bot or a, like a sales GPT and then a compliance GPT for them to be able to talk to each other because the sales... Um, the sales bot is going to create um, is going to create output that may not go with compliance, and the compliance bot needs to look at that and say, "No, this needs to be changed." And then that back and forth. So, so you heard that, right? Like you heard what you just said. You described the matrix. You will have AI <laughs> talking to each other. <laughs> I thought we got away from this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's but a the person who clicks publish is ultimately like it should be a human. I'm against autopilot um, AI where whatever is being generated is just automatically uploaded. And I know that like there are like sh whole Shopify stores that are made just where like people are just popping out like AI made products. But like there's already so much crap on the internet like why add more crap you know like i don't know how else to put that except that amen to that that yeah like, couldn't be more like, true like don't just like let your ai just run off into the wind like it's not a good idea like get someone to say like no i don't want that to go with our brand you know <laughs> yeah that's that's really good advice so let's tie this conversation back to the harmonious architecture a little bit of the 10 disciplines that spell out harmonious, I think AI would probably touch all of them and we can make a case for that. We're not going to go through and do that. I want to highlight the ones that are really, really important. Um, and, and let's start with order. I think this is where a lot of people get confused with automation in general. That could be buying a machine that's automated or like you said, putting a form on a website versus a chat bot. When you implement AI or you implement automation in your company when filtered through the order discipline you have to make sure it is for the benefit of the customer or the end user you cannot like vanessa said you cannot put a chat bot on your website that makes the customer do more work just to streamline your back end because you're going to lose customers and if you don't have customers you don't have a business i think that's pretty self-explanatory so when you're thinking about ai and this is what we've been talking about that's why vanessa's website is on the screen please consult an expert or someone who can walk you through that process. And we're happy to do that too. That's our whole, that's the whole reason this architecture exists. We want to make sure that when you do one thing, it doesn't affect six other areas that you're not thinking about. So especially with AI, I mean, this topic is way too big for one 20 minute episode here. Yeah. I, I want to look at specifically order and then risk and defense. If you are not aware of the legal ramifications of what you're doing with AI and how that affects your security compliance with your customer data and all of all of the things that go into that you really need to take a hard look at that because ai is bigger and more powerful than you understand with the current language models and what you integrate it with could actually be very risky for your customer data your compliance like i said and just the health of your company so please consult an expert that's why we have vanessa here and her website's on the screen so vanessa um before i let you go one last question and that is I actually have two last questions, but the first one is 
when should somebody come to you when they're when they're in the process of thinking through AI? When do you like to step in and consult them through that conversation? Um, I would say that when they are trying to decide whether or not they are going to spend the time to go and look at their solutions, whether they're going to assign that to someone else or whether they're going to hire it out. So the issues with taking it in-house, and it may be possible, and that may be the best solution, um, but if they're doing that in-house, um, like they have to consider like um, the time and cost that it's going to take for them to train themselves and understand how AI can help them on that solution versus having someone outside an expert who's already familiar, has to have these conversations with other business owners. And if that might not be more cost and time effective, um, because ultimately you you have to make a choice of your time um, as a business owner and for your, your employee as well. Yeah. Time, time is everything. Um, and lastly, now, wh where can people follow along and, and see what you're up to? Um, do you have social media you post to or is the best place to go to your website? Yeah, um, I think for the website, it's best if you're wanting to hop on a consultation call and um, our consultations are free. Please don't pay for consultations that is uh, happening in the AI and automation space. Um, and then if you just want to follow along with AI news, I'm a you can connect with me on LinkedIn. So Vanessa Jinx is my, um, yeah, just, I think that I'm like one of the only ones. So yes, very unique name. So yeah. I will put all of that in the show notes. Um, this has been awesome. Thank you so much for joining us and shedding a little bit of light on this big, scary topic as we dive into the matrix here. So we'll see where this all goes over the next couple of years. Um, but thankfully we have experts like Vanessa who can help you walk through it. Um, so this has been a great episode, Vanessa, thank you. And we will see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch.